Hello, this is the uh, EVE University core class introduction to trade. We talk in the financial PVP for fun and profit. In this class, we'll be talking about the market, market window, how to place buy and sell orders, station trading and trade hubs, how to make a profit, region trading, inter-region trading, direct trade and contracts. In HIV, there's not a central market. Goods are traded in stations and citadels. The goods are hauled by ship from station to station. Markets are run by players. In some markets, there's fierce competition. In others, needs go unmet. To find the market window, you go to the Neocom menu and click on the symbol that looks like a graph, or you can use the shortcut Alt plus R from your keyboard to open the window directly. The market window is divided into several areas. In the left you have the browse area where you can search for items. You have the sellers area where there are items in the station to sell and the buyers area with the offers for uh, buying from players. The sellers area you have the if the item is available on the station or the number of jumps away you can find the item. Quantity of items, the price they're selling at, location and the expiration with the days, hours, and minutes, seconds to the expiration of the offer. In the buyer's area, you see that there's an a offer in the station for a quantity of eight items and the offer price the, the buyer is trying to buy them for. The location, the range for the offer, which in this case is the station but can be two jumps away, the minimum volume that the buyer accepts to buy and the expiration of the offer in the, also in days, hours, minutes. In the search window, you can enter the name of an item and make a search for that item by entering the first letters and clicking on the search button. Not all faction items and not all the meta variations of an item are present when you search in the browse window. Another way you can browse is by clicking on the arrow to the left of the type you wish to open. This will open the subtypes for that type, and then clicking on the next arrow will open the subtypes for that subtype, and then clicking on the arrow again, and so on and so forth, until you reach the item desired. Items fall into a specific category or are race specific. For the item type you chose that is present in the regional marker, you want to make sure that you buy at the lowest price. So, click on the arrow to the right side of the price column to sort the prices in ascending order with the lowest price on top. In the buyer's column, you click on the arrow to the right side of the price, but this time in descending order, so that you have the highest price on top. Now that you have the lowest price, you set your buy order, selecting the item on top of the column, which is the cheapest you can find at that station, and then by clicking on the place buy order button. If you do nothing else and click on the buy button, you will buy immediately at the price set put forward by the player who set the market order. But you could offer a price that you choose and wait to see if there are takers for your offer. For this, you go to the Advanced tab in the Buy Order. When you open the Advanced tab and set the price you want to offer for the item, you will set an order that will remain open until it is fulfilled by a player that decides to sell the product to you at the price you set. In this case, so that your order appears on top of the buyer's order, you want to set the price at least a decimal is above the price of the highest offer existing in that station. This is to give some visibility to your offers so that it can be fulfilled. To the right of your bid price, you have the below regional average. The regional average is shown below the bid price, and below you have the best regional price, and also with the percentage shown, number of units, and that it is in the same station. And the best matchable price, which has an indication of the percentage below or above, and the number of units also in the same station. Now you enter the number of items you want to buy. You set the time frame that you want the offer to stand, which usually is uh, three months, uh, and you set the range to station. 
Be cautious about where your offer might be fulfilled. It can be time-consuming to go and get your goods. And if you decide that you don't want to waste the time to go 40 jumps out and back to fetch the item, or you need the item in some urgency, the taxis and broker's fee will be lost. You won't get them back after they're paid. Plus, you have to set a new order, paying again those taxes and broker fees. Your order is now open and sitting correctly on top of buyer's queue. That way, it has the better visibility possible to any player desiring to fulfill your order. Then, competition comes along and tries to outbid you by placing in higher value. You are now out of the top and your order has less probability of being fulfilled. So, what do you do now? Right click your order, choose the modify option by clicking on it and now set a new value that is higher than the other player's bid. And you're all set, you're on top again. But remember that you can only modify your order after 5 minutes. To place a sell order you need to have the goods in the market anger of the station or to sell them at. Right click the item you want to sell, set the numbers of items. Choose your price, taking into account that you want your item to show on top of the column. So you need to set a price that is at least uh, 0.01 is lower than the lowest offer. You can always modify your order at a later time. Once an order is set, there's a period of 5 minutes latency before you can modify it. If there is competition on a station for the same item that you're selling, you want to check back later to see if your item is still on top of the seller's list. If not, you will need to modify the order to bring it back on top. You do not want to be setting orders repeatedly, so you should set a time long. Three months is the usual time frame. And be careful to set the correct price because you can lose a lot of money with a simple mistake. Count your zeros carefully before clicking on the sell button and look to the right of the price you're setting for the comparison with the regional average. In this case, set the price is 90% below the regional average shown in red. This should light a warning flag that something is wrong. The number of orders you can have open in the market depends, like everything else, on even the skills of your character. Trade will give you 4 orders per level, Retail will give you 8 orders per level, Wholesale 16 orders per level and Tycoon 32. Since Wholesale has a price tag of 35 million and Tycoon 100 million, you can profit from setting up orders through your out of the uni alt character or making alpha characters to set orders. Also, when you place an order, the value of the item is removed from your wallet into the escrow. What we call station trading, you buy what is available for sale in the station and you resell it in the station. In the first column of a market data, you'll find what's available for sale in the station. You can also see the items available in other stations and the number of jumps they're away from where you are. Session trading is usually done in a trade hub. This is where you'll find available the majority of products. Profit you can expect to make depends on a series of factors, like the difference of price between sellers and buyers, the volume of products sold per day, and you need to have a margin that covers for the tax and broker's fees. Expect to find a, a huge competition in uh, station trading hubs and also the uh, places that are surrounded by piracy. For any product, you need to check the price history tab and check the volume of products sold every day. You need products that sell in good volumes to be sure that your products will sell and you won't be stuck with a lot of stock going nowhere. The frequency, meaning that the product is sold at least 5 or 6 times per week, best if it is sold every day. And then the volatility of prices, which means that you'll have an opportunity for profit if you buy when the price is low and resell later when the price is high. The higher the volatility, the better. One quick way to check how volatile is a market is by looking at the grey that goes along the graph. That shows the difference between the highest price for the day and the lowest price. So, when the grey band is large, there is high volatility, and when it is narrow, the volatility of price is low. You can set the price history to show different periods, like one month or even shorter, just to see how long you expect to keep an item before you can resell it with a profit. On every sale you may count on a 5% uh, taxes and broker fee. The broker fee can be reduced, uh, it's 3% and it can be reduced by broker relations level, the faction standing and the corporation standing with the NPC stations you're trading at. The minimum is 
taxes start at 2% and can, buy, can be reduced with skill accounting. Uh, in citadels owned by players, the players set their own fees, so they vary a lot. In rigid trading, you buy your goods in one station and go sell the goods in the station near or far away. You can buy goods that are located in a different station than the one you're in right now. If you want to find deals outside the region you are in, you need to go out of game tools like evemarketed.com. The link is available on the last slide of the presentation. There are a couple of skills that can save time and make your life easier. You can place your buy and sell orders remotely, remotely modify orders and remotely create long range buy orders. You can even do your other work while you're hauling the goods from station to station, saving time that way. If some products are not available at a remote station, you can provide for them. Finding a hotspot that needs products that you can supply is what trade is all about. In a place where the competition is non-existent, you can make a better profit by setting your prices a bit higher. Also, you'll be providing a service to the pilots in that region. They will have a product near where they are instead of traveling the distance to go and buy them. Places where there is high demand, like high sec markets near low or no sec war zones, stations where there are large numbers of pilots missioning or involved in PvP, are good places to find hotspots to set your trade operations. You can also make hauling contracts to avoid the uh, time consumed in jumping away. Hauling contracts can be made to repute organizations like Red Frog and the Push X. Now remember that EVE Uni is almost always at war, and if you carry large loads with billions worth of goods, you are a target. People will gate camp, will cargo scan your ship to see if the load is worthwhile, and will suicide gank you on high sex. So, check for gate camps before you travel, use your out of corp alt to carry the goods, tank your ship, 16k EHP will survive a catalyst ganker, but not a small gain. So, Never, never autopilot and haul less than 50 million at a time. You can also find good opportunities in contracts. You can sell your products outside of the market by selling directly to other players. Be aware that fraud is omnipresent and you need to check carefully the contracts that you accept. Also, here are a lot of paid hauling contracts that you can check. You will need to pull up a collateral to accept the hauling contracts though. Also, you can trade items instead of offering money and start a part of deal. We now have time for a Q&A. Please fill the class feedback form linked in chat. And that concludes the introduction to trade core class. Thank you very much.